Hey, Black Heights, you've been talking about degrees. Are there jobs that exist out there where you don't need a degree? Yes, there absolutely is. And in this video today, I'm going to talk about the top 10 tech jobs that have a high salary that doesn't require a degree. Although on this channel, we do talk about getting your degrees to eliminate some of the challenges that you may face when you climb the ladder. But if you choose not to get a degree, there is a way that you can get into these tech jobs or a high paying tech job. And I'm going to talk about the top 10 tech jobs that exist that really demand a high salary that don't require a degree. What's up, ladder climbers? This is Antoine Wade, six figure earner and millionaire. And welcome back to the Black Hacks channel where we talk about all things that help you to have success in life. And I know you want to have success in life. So keep an open mind and stay here for the entire video. And while you're at it, if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell to be alerted when we drop that new content. Also, while you're at it, go ahead and stump on that like button as it helps us grow the channel. And guys, like I said, you can get into the tech space and I'm going to be talking about the top 10 tech jobs that do not require a degree. And we're going to start off with number one being the easiest to get into and number 10 being the most difficult to get into. So let's start off with number one. And number one is a computer support specialist. And basically a computer support specialist helps with troubleshooting computers as well as monitoring networks. And these guys ask specific questions to gain clarity on a customer issue. And what they end up doing is they walk the customer through how to fix it. So these guys learn to develop really effective soft skills such as active listening and effective communication. And the reason is because they work directly with the customer to install and use new hardware and software. And some support specialists may perform computer repairs as well. And this position requires that you have experience troubleshooting common issues with computers and knowledge of coding and languages and operating systems is a plus. And what I would say is this guys, if you wanna get into a role like this, a Comp TIA A plus certification would be a good fit or a good certification for this type of a role. And guess what guys, the average salary for this role is about $36,000 a year. And this isn't a lot of money, but this is where many people start their IT career. And if you want to get a start, check out brother Kev Tech IT Supports YouTube channel. He is a fantastic content creator who is helping people get into the IT industry. And at number two is a help desk analyst and a help desk analyst provides technical solutions for a company that has a product or a service to sell. Typically it is a software product and that product could be a B2B solution or a B2C solution. And basically the help desk analyst is a first line of defense for issues that a customer may have and they are pretty knowledgeable on the actual product. And they typically provide technical support over the phone via email as well as chats to the end user. They maintain support cases in software such as Salesforce and they maintain those support cases to look at the common issues and what they end up doing is developing directions to help users resolve them quickly. They also work with senior staff in the IT department or other people in the IT department for installations as well as implementing technical solutions. And I've managed a team of help desk analysts before. Many of them come into this role as an entry level person into tech. This is another entry level role or they may come into this role at the end of their career where they want to make some money to get prepared for retirement. Either way, it is a good role to have and the average salary for a help desk analyst is about $45,000 per year. And at number three is an entry level data analyst. And as a data analyst, your primary responsibility is to assist team leads and managers with retrieving, cleaning, organizing data for their department needs. An entry level data analyst sometimes perform data entry activities in databases. So knowing SQL is good. And they also help with processing data for customers. Now here's the catch because I know you guys are looking for one to begin work as a data analyst without a degree, you will need to seek self education. And there are many ways that you can get it and i would say start with youtube there is a youtuber named alex the data analyst and he does a great job at explaining things that you need to learn and some of the things that you need to learn that i've gathered is understanding python so while you don't need a college degree you will still need to be educated in the field and you can't be lazy 
And guess what, guys? The average salary for a junior data analyst is $47,000 a year. And at number four, guys, is a computer programmer. And a computer programmers are basically responsible for testing, developing, and sometimes designing software to ensure that it is scalable and reliable. And computer programmers are responsible for knowing various computer languages to write, update and to troubleshoot existing programs and some other duties that computer programmers are responsible for is debugging code developing computer infrastructure and maintaining operating systems there is a ton of money to be made here but you have to be cautious as it is a high burnout career so you have to have a plan and the people who are most successful in this role are the ones who are committed to self-learning. And the average salary for a computer programmer is $49,000 per year. And at number five is a web developer. And I did a video on a web developer, so check it out up here. It's called Stop Playing and Become a Web Developer Today. And in that video, I explained that there are three types of web developers, a front-end developer, a back-end developer, as well as a full-stack developer. And a front-end developer designs the part of the website that users will see. And a back-end developer makes sure that all aspects of the site's infrastructure will work together. And a full-stack developer does it all. They can do it all front-end, back-end, left end right end whatever end you want it to do they can do it all and here's the thing guys most web developers have a college degree but there are also many of them that are self-taught and the average salary for a web developer is seventy two thousand dollars per year and at number six guys is an it team lead or a junior it manager they're the same thing and it team leads oversee the operations of the it staff in the technology of a business as a whole. So they're responsible for maintaining an organization's software and hardware and evaluating their needs for electronic infrastructures. And IT managers may analyze and install computer networks. And here's the thing, guys. Becoming an IT manager requires at least five years of experience in the field with a proven knowledge of your skill set. And getting an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree will certainly improve your chances of becoming an IT team lead. But you can also have a great career without one by climbing the ladder using those superior soft skills and those superior technology skills that you have gained along your journey. And the average salary for IT team lead slash manager is $88,000 per year. And at number seven is a software engineer. I started my career off as a software engineer, but I've worked with one in particular who did not have a degree and he was self-taught beginning his career as a programmer. And he was absolutely fantastic. Software engineers develop software solutions for supply chains, finance, marketing, customer relationship management software, and many more. And software engineers document their software through flowcharts, layouts, instructions, and coding. And you can learn how to become a software engineer by watching YouTube videos and attending local and online courses. And I would say one of the most important thing is to seek a mentor who was or who is a software engineer. And guess what guys, the average salary for a software engineer is $106,000 per year. I certainly wasn't making that amount of money when I graduated. And at number eight, guys, is a junior cybersecurity specialist. And cybersecurity specialists basically monitor networks for any vulnerabilities or potential threats to the organization's data. And they build firewalls and manage any attacks on the network infrastructure. And as a cybersecurity specialist, you will develop and implement strategies for data protection. And many cybersecurity professionals don't have a degree since the field is really new and it is a fast paced field as well. So college degrees can't keep up. It's kind of like digital marketing and they don't teach a lot of digital marketing in college because the college marketing systems are antiquated. But let me not digress. So cybersecurity is an area like the case with many technical fields where employers are free to hire whomever they want and they want people who have experience, but you don't need a degree. And while you don't need a degree to start in cybersecurity, relevant certifications are required. And I would advise if you are interested in this field, check out my brother, Professor Black Ops YouTube channel, and I'll link that one in the description of this video. And cybersecurity professionals make a whole bunch of money. Average salary is about $114,000 per year. And at number nine, guys, is a DevOps engineer, and I know that name sounds cool, DevOps. 
ops. That's that's pretty dope. But it's basically a combination of a developer and an operations personnel. And they are ultimately responsible for developing, upgrading, and implementing software solutions for internal systems. They monitor the health of servers and work with software developers, IT professionals, and system operators to implement new code and identify opportunities for improvement. And DevOps engineers require five or more years with experience, typically in the role of a developer, a software engineer. Also, a lot of them are in these roles from overseeing business operations. So they are a combination of engineer as well as business operator or business lead and things like that. And it is a high paying career with the average salary of $125,000 per year. And at number 10, guys, is a software architect. And software architects basically use their technical and their analytical skills to design whole systems based on client requirements. And these guys are subject matter experts for the companies that they work for. And people in this position routinely collaborate with business leaders, engineers, and other developers to ensure that the customized software is clear intuitive to non-tech users. They oversee the code, they create development standards, and they keep the project moving along on time. And software architects are very skilled in programming languages and operating systems as well. And one way to get to a role like this is to take a whole bunch of courses and to seek some mentorship and to learn as much as you can from other people who are in the line of work. And if you can do all of that, you'll be making a whole bunch of money because the average salary for a software architect is $138,000 per year. And guys, that is the top 10 highest paying tech jobs. And as I mentioned, these do not require a degree, but you will improve your chances by having a degree. And I like to say it like this, guys, having a degree is being able to walk through 10 doors, 10 opportunities, whereas not having a degree, you're only able to walk through three. There are people who are very successful who do not have a degree, but if you're looking to climb the ladder in the tech space, it is best that you get one. That's the reason why we talk about that on this channel. Guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Do me a favor and leave me a comment on any of the points that I have made in this video. I would love to hear from you. Also, if you haven't hit that subscribe button or that notification bell, go ahead and do that right now. While you're at it, if you haven't hit that like button either because you haven't been listening, go ahead and hit that like button. It really helps us grow the channel, guys. And until next time, y'all. Peace.